The Star Trek universe is filled with several unique species scattered all across the galaxy, and the Klingons are one such popular species. Originating on the planet of Kronos, the Klingons were a humanoid warrior species that were known to be one of the most powerful forces in the galaxy. They were greatly feared due to their honor code and aggressive culture, and had become a widely respected military power in the galaxy. They also had a unique physical structure, and today we will explore their anatomy in greater detail. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Perhaps cranial reconstruction. I have a feeling that's... Exploring the basic details of Klingon physiology. Klingon physiology had a few similarities with human physiology, as they were both bipedal tetrapod species with a head, neck, torso, and four limbs. Klingons also had a unique physiological feature known as a brack lull, due to which they had extra organs as compared to humans. This essentially meant that they had several stomachs, two livers, 23 ribs, and eight chambered hearts, among other things. It was believed that they also had three lungs and that the additional lung helped them with their stamina. While these features served as a huge difference between Klingons and humans, these species did share a common ancestry with ancient humanoids. They had similar DNA that made them compatible with humans to some extent. Extent. Klingons typically weighed about 200 kilograms, and their basic physical structure included a layer of exoskeleton with spines and bones that protruded from their skin and appeared as sharp pincers. Their faces were also filled with a bioacidic compound stored in venom sacs, and they also had two mandibles near their lower jaw. Prehistorically, Klingon males also had a scary voice, and they would use their vocalizations to scare off opponents or even attract mates. Over time, Klingons went through a lot of changes, and the modern Klingon warrior had certain different physical attributes that are explored as follows. Sagittal Crest Klingons had a sagittal crest on their foreheads, which means that they had ridges that ran all the way from their forehead to their skull and the rest of their bone structure. Some Klingons had cone-shaped skulls, and there was a lot of variation in the appearance of their skulls. The Klingon cranium was stored inside an exoskeleton near the tricipital lobe, and the ridges on their forehead became much less prominent when they extended towards the back of the skull. Ears. Klingon's ears included an external auricle and recessed pinna, wherein the auricle was a round structure and the pinna was a pointy structure seen on the back of their heads. In an alternate reality, Klingons also had pointy auricles instead of rounded ones, and they even had ridges on top of their ears. Eyes. Typically, Klingons had round eyes with corneas and scleras, and they also had eyebrows that usually grew diagonally. They did not have tear ducts like humans, but their eyes had a reflective quality. While there was an absence of tear ducts, there were stories surrounding Kalis, who had once filled an entire ocean with his tears. There was also another Klingon named Kern, who did have the ability to produce tears. Nose. Klingon noses differed from one another in terms of ridges. Some Klingons had horizontal ridges on their noses, while some had a single vertical ridge running through them. The vertical ridges made their noses seem broader and flatter, and they sometimes also had heavy ridges around their nostrils. Mouth. Klingons typically had thick lips as well as sharp teeth, and their teeth were notably huge in size. They also had two sharp incisors, and some sources even state that they would sharpen their teeth before any battle. Hair. Klingons had thick and curly hair on their heads, and male Klingons even had facial hair after hitting puberty. There was an increase in hair growth, especially after puberty, and their hair would also gray with age, just like humans. Some Klingons were bald and did not have any facial hair as well, and some of them even had receding hairlines or issues with balding, just like humans. Face and body. Klingons had vertical ridges that went down their chin and neck, and their cheeks were especially quite prominent. Their necks varied from one Klingon to another, wherein some had bony necks while others did not. The vertical ridge that went down their necks finally expanded around their shoulders into several ridges, and these ridges appeared on their upper chest as well as between the female breasts. On the other hand, male Klingons had smooth chests without any ridges on them. Both male and female Klingons had ridges on their backs and buttocks, and female Klingons even even had ridges around the sides of their abdomen. They even had ridged feet and spines, and there was a common defect seen in newborns wherein they had curvatures on their spines. Typically, this issue was corrected with the help of surgery or medicine that allowed genetic modification. In some cases, Klingons had sharp talons at the end of their hands instead of fingers. Didn't a warrior have the right to decide when his time has come? 
What is the significance of the different skin colors among Klingons? Klingons did not have the same skin color, and their skin colors ranged from dark brown and metallic to even bright colors such as purple, pink, or blue. Essentially, the Klingon skin could be any color across the spectrum of a rainbow, and they could have chalky white skin or even bright red skin. Their skin also had a shimmery metallic sheen that could sometimes act as a semi-reflective surface. While there were several different skin colors among Klingons, albino Klingons were typically considered to be outcasts in their culture. What is the secret behind Klingon's strength, and are they stronger than humans? The Klingons are known as a race of warriors, and one would typically assume that they are extremely strong creatures. However, it appears that they are biologically at par with humans, and do not possess any extra physical features that make them stronger. They seem to have double the amount of endurance compared to humans, but otherwise, they don't surpass humans. This is also known as the Worf Effect in fiction, which refers to a situation where a strong, warrior-like character ends up being defeated by someone supposedly weaker. In this situation, the Klingons are the stronger species that are shown to be at par with regular humans. This may also surprise us as we've heard quite a bit about the Klingons' desire to take care of situations with violence and aggression. While Klingons are physically as strong as humans, it is their training that makes them stronger. They have trained their entire life, and they live in a culture where it is quite common to resort to violence and learn to endure physical pain. There have been some contradictions across the franchise, where the Klingons have been shown to be strong stronger than they are. However, Klingon warriors are stronger than humans due to their upbringing and culture. They grow up in an environment where fighting is the priority, and there is no doubt that an average Klingon warrior would be stronger than a human. However, they would not have an easy win if they faced a trained human. Regardless, a Klingon warrior is stronger than a human because they have more endurance, and they can also withstand injuries without batting an eye, whereas a human could die from a serious injury. The Klingon strength lies in their endurance, as it allows them to fight for longer and withstand more attacks than their foes. Their durability enables them to defeat a number of foes, and they also have a strong set of skulls and bones that cannot be easily damaged. The ridges on their forehead that run down to their backs also suggest that they have a strong bone structure, and their vital organs are also more durable than humans and other species. I accept your challenge. Human. Why do the Klingons in Star Trek Discovery look different? The Klingons have appeared in a lot of Star Trek media, and they especially look different in Star Trek Discovery due to the absence of ridges on their foreheads. They have smooth foreheads instead of foreheads with ridges all over them, and they seem different because they are ancient Klingons who have eventually died out. These Klingons were actually a group of alienated beings who had encountered humans and later attempted to appear like them. In 2154, these Klingons also got access to a genetic material known as human augments, and they used it on themselves to change their genetic makeup. They even became stronger and wiser, but at the same time they suffered certain effects in the form of the Levodian flu. The genetic material affected their physical appearance, and one of the Klingons fell prey to this flu that later turned into an airborne plague. Klingons initially lost the ridges that appeared on their forehead when the plague had just started spreading. Eventually, Dr. Phlox found a cure to the plague, but the Klingons looked different in Star Trek Discovery due to the side effects of their experiments. Why is Klingon blood pink? In Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, we see that the Klingon had pink blood. The reason given for this was that they needed to do so to ensure that the movie got a PG rating. The movie included a lot of bloody scenes which would not have been appropriate for a young audience, and the creators tried to get around this issue by changing the Klingon's blood color to pink instead of a bright red. Some scenes, such as Chancellor Gorkon's assassination, would have certainly warranted an R rating if their blood was red, and the creators initially decided that the Klingons should have green blood. However, Vulcan blood was also green, and the Klingons were then supposed to have lavender blood. On screen, their blood appeared pink, and it was such a prominent feature that it caught everyone's eye. Over time, Klingons were seen having both red and pink blood across various media. Their blood was red in almost every other movie or show, and fans were initially confused to see that they had pink blood in Star Trek VI. Some fans have even suggested that the pink blood results from the zero gravity in Chancellor Gorkon's ship, but this theory doesn't hold much weight. Other fans have also justified the pink blood by pointing out that Klingons are not a monoculture and have several physical differences. They even have different skin colors among other variations, and it makes sense that they also have red or pink blood. At the end of the day, the fact of the matter remains that they had pink blood to preserve the franchise's history of getting PG ratings.
How do Klingons reproduce? The Klingons also had peculiar mating rituals that tended to be complex and risky. It began with them sniffing each other's right hand and then gripping it hard enough that it started bleeding. Klingons typically mated for life, and they usually even committed to a lifelong relationship only after meeting once. They also could not control who they fell in love with, and they took their relationships quite seriously. Klingon marriage ceremonies were very elaborate, and they included a large number of witnesses as well as reenactments of the Klingon creation myths and so on. However, another shorter version of the ceremony did not require any witnesses or even an officiant. As long as both parties consented to this marriage, it was accepted as a marriage, even if the ceremony was cut short. After marriage, Klingons had an intense mating ritual that often ended in multiple broken bones. Breaking one's clavicle or fracturing it was even considered a blessing on the wedding night, and the entire mating ritual was packed with action. It could be pretty intimidating to an outsider, and it even involved throwing furniture or dodging heavy objects while reading love poems to one's partner. Typically, the female threw heavy objects at the male, who tried to deflect them while trying to impress his partner with poetry. Klingons also had strict preferences regarding mating, and they usually only mated with partners of the same species. Their reproductive organs were also not compatible with humans, as they had two of every organ. In this manner, a Klingon male had two reproductive organs instead of one, and this made them quite incompatible with human females. Even though they were supposedly not compatible, there was a slight chance that a human could have a child with a Klingon. In fact, the gestation period for Klingon pregnancies was around 30 weeks, while it was a lot shorter for mixed species. The base anatomical structure of Klingons and humans was similar and they could come together to create a child with features of both species. It was pretty rare to see a Klingon human pregnancy, and it also had some side effects on the mother due to clashing metabolisms. The Klingon gene was also much stronger than the human gene, and a child who only had one quarter Klingon ancestry was also likely to develop forehead ridges. Exploring some of the bizarre Klingon death rituals. Klingons also had a strange death ritual wherein they opened the eyes of a dying warrior and then stared into them until they could confirm that he had passed away. After staring into their eyes, the Klingons would look up to the sky and scream loudly, which seemed to be their way of informing the dead that another Klingon warrior was joining them. After finishing this ritual, they would consider the warrior's body an empty shell and believe it is useless now that the soul had departed the body. They would get rid of the body in any way that seemed convenient at the time, and the Klingons hardly ever let anyone outside their species witness their death ritual. Worf often performed this ritual for many of his friends, such as Chorus and Kanvas. He later performed the ritual for Kalar and Jadzia Dax, but he did not open their eyes during the death ritual either because he couldn't bear to see them dying, or because it would be deemed inappropriate to perform this ritual on a female mate. Jadzia was Worf's betrothed, and he recited a phrase stating that there was victory and honor in death when she passed away. Finally, Worf performed this ritual again in the year 2375, when he killed Goron in combat, and opened his eyes when he was dying. The Klingons also appeared to have another death ritual in the past where they would mummify the dead and preserve their bodies. They also practiced Ak Va, which is essentially the act of watching a fallen warrior die in front of their eyes. The Klingon also believed in the idea of an afterlife known as the Stovokor. They could enter this afterlife only if they died in battle or performed an act of sacrifice to protect others. In some instances, a Klingon warrior would die in the middle of a surprise attack or some other way that lacked honor. In such cases, the deceased's loved ones or family members would fight a battle in their name, and an honorable victory would then ensure that the dead could enter Stovo Kor. Territory. Why are the Klingons intimidated by Tribbles? Tribbles were another alien species in the Star Trek universe, and they were typically shown as gentle, lovable creatures that were known for reproducing in large numbers. It was quite a surprise that Klingons were intimidated by Tribbles, but they do have their reasons. It appears that Tribbles are not as harmless as they appear, and they are primarily known to be the sworn enemies of the Klingons. The idea of a warrior species being scared of tiny furballs is quite funny, and this was especially explored in an episode titled The Trouble with Tribbles. In this episode, a space hustler, Cyrano Jones, starts selling Tribbles as cute little companions and even insists that their soft purring noises can be quite calming. While the Tribbles seem like calm creatures, they tend to become hostile around Klingons and even start showing a new side. Their reason for hating Klingons remains a mystery history and this even leads to a war between the two species. The Tribbles start weeding out Klingon spies disguised as humans, and even help Kirk save his
his crew. On the other hand, the Klingons find them quite irritable, and later it is even revealed that the Tribbles infest the Klingon Empire and even pose a considerable risk to their race. They also breed at a fast pace and create 10 new children every 12 hours. Furthermore, every Tribble was born pregnant, and these offspring would also start producing more Tribbles right after birth. With such a vast population, the Tribbles had no trouble taking over the Klingon Empire and almost wiping their race off the map. Eventually, the Klingons had to take drastic measures and kill every Tribble in their path. Hundreds of Klingon warriors went on a mission to destroy Tribbles as well as their homeworld, but not before the Tribbles managed to beat the Klingon homeworld. A little something about Klingon society. The Klingon society was known to be quite complex, and it consisted of great houses that came from a noble lineage and played a huge role in the Klingon High Court. These great houses were represented in the High Court, which was overseen by a chancellor, who essentially played the role of a leader. The Klingon society greatly declined in the 22nd and late 23rd century, mainly because they stopped caring about their true honor and neglected their weapons instead of taking care of them. They were also victims of a virus that severely impacted the Klingon Empire, and a new regime even took control of their empire after the virus weakened them. Klingon then became an authoritarian state briefly until the late 23rd century. Klingon society was predominantly run by males, who served in leadership positions in the society's politics and the military. However, there were some exceptions, and females such as Dennis and Azit Burr became a part of the High Council. Typically, females in Klingon society took care of the house and family, and some laws prevented them from serving in the High Council. They were also only allowed to take control over the house in situations where there was no male successor or if they had enough money to do so. While women were not treated equally in this political scenario, they were considered considered to be the equal of men in terms of strength and honor. They were also expected to fight in wars and show the same level of physical ability as men. Klingon society greatly valued family reputation and honor, and they also greatly followed traditions. Any Klingon warrior who broke tradition brought a lot of shame to his family name, and in severe cases, he could be discommendated. Discommendation meant that the Klingon High Council would strip him of his honor, and it was shameful for any warrior to be subjected to this procedure. Klingons also took their family bloodlines and the military quite seriously. Klingon traditions typically included several rituals that were to be performed at specific milestones in one's life. Some of these rituals included the Rite of Succession, which was performed by a future leader only after confirming the death of the previous leader through a ceremony known as the Sanchi Ceremony. Klingons were also expected to go through the Rite of Ascension in order to finally be recognized as warriors. Sometimes, Klingon warriors could be accepted in different houses than where they originally started their journey, through a process known as the Rus Tai. There was also another ritual known as the Rite of Vengeance, which allowed Klingons to fight for their loved ones after they passed away. If a Klingon warrior felt that his family member was wrongly killed, he had the right to seek vengeance against the killer by challenging them to a fight. Klingon society placed great importance on honor, traditions, and rituals, and had a rich culture. Three ships approaching. Are all Klingons expected to be great warriors? While Klingons are known as a warrior species, not every single Klingon is expected to be a great soldier. Of course, soldiers are the most respected sect of Klingons, but there are also other occupations that require manpower. For instance, Klingons needed someone to invent warships and weapons to aid their soldiers in fighting and winning wars. In this case, the inventor would gain the respect of all the other Klingons. At the end of the day, no society can function only with the help of soldiers, and we do need some people to pick other occupations. While all Klingons were expected to be warriors and trained to fight, not everyone had to become a soldier. Fighting was an essential life skill that was taught to them, and it was an important part of their culture. Just as reading and writing are basic skills that are a part of Western cultures, being able to fight was a necessary skill in Klingon society. True Klingons should be able to hold their ground in a fight, or at least have some basic training to help them defend themselves, but they were not expected to be great warriors. <laughs> Unraveling the mysteries of the Klingon language. Klingon is essentially an elvish language, and it was developed by an American linguist, Mark Okrand. The Klingon language has an alphabet similar to the Latin alphabet, and it was developed for the Star Trek series. On this basis, many linguists seem to believe that it can't be considered a full-fledged language because it's not used by humans naturally. However, languages are constantly evolving, and there is no reason to disregard the Klingon language only based on this argument. Some actors, such as Leonard Nimoy, even speak 
fluent Klingon, and Harv Bennett is known for creating several signature Klingon phrases, such as Nuknach, which means what do you want, and Gotlish, which means danger. The sound of the Klingon language is a mixture of German, Irish, Italian, Russian, and Japanese accents. The language also uses animal sounds, especially when pronouncing words like Nuknach, which is written as Nunia to resemble alien sounds. This language also uses complicated syntax and phoneme shifts that make Klingon a unique language of its own, and not just some made-up language that combines the features of other languages. Around 250 to 300 people also speak Klingon in the real world, and David Peterson, who is known for creating the Dothraki language in Game of Thrones, even teaches Klingon at the University of California. Klingon also has its own set of grammar rules, idioms, nouns, and pronouns, and some people firmly state that it should be considered a real language. However, it has a limited vocabulary of around a thousand words, and some people also think that its rules are similar to those in English. Conclusion to sum it up, Klingons were an extremely powerful species that established themselves as powerful forces in the Star Trek universe. They also had strict rituals and traditions, as well as unique physiological details that made them stand apart from other humanoids. As always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day!